what's going on guys Balkan Architect here and in today's video I have a new announcement so for the new course for this week advanced Balkan Architect course that's available on my patreon first link in the description it's a one-hour course on annotation and graphics in Revit we're going to be covering some advanced tags so as you can see over here I've created this advanced window tag that really corresponds to rules and regulations in most countries so we have a window tag that's reporting the window type number also we have the height and width of the window over here on this line and on the inside it's reporting the sill height of the window so all of these are really important elements that you should have within your Revit project and uh, just the regular tags that come with Revit are really annoying. So this is the regular door tag and it just gives you nothing. So I show you in this tutorial how to make these a bit more advanced tags that are actually reporting parameters from each family to which they're set. So this window that you have over here, here you can see the dimensions correspond to this. And if we take a look at the uh, sill height, uh, sill height, it corresponds to that. So it's basically pulling information from the model. Also, I do the same thing for doors. Here we have a door that's a security door. We have the height and width over here. And then we have a different one that has a circle for the interior door. And also we have uh, the height and width for that one. Also, we're not only talking about the uh, window and door tags, I'm going to be showing you some advanced uh, wall tags. So this is a wall tag, again, that's not just reporting the uh, wall type, That's that would be this W1, but also I show you how to pull some information from that wall and not only from the wall type, but also from the wall instance. So I show you the difference between instance uh, parameters and properties and uh, type parameters and properties and how to show them in labels and uh, in all of your tags. So here we have, it's pulling the width of the wall, it's pulling the materials used, and also here we have structural. So this instance is set up as structural. This one, for example, isn't, so that one wouldn't have this structural. This one here has structural so this is an instant uh, instance uh, basically reporting label that we have over here so I'll show you how to create that family and then you can reuse it in any future projects and of course it will be available for download uh, on my patreon again as I said first link in the description also in this course I decided to cover the topic of these spot elevations just because people are really annoyed with those and this the labels they are uh, basically like component families so you can go here into edit type and you can edit them unfortunately these spot elevations are more like system families so you don't have that option so i show you a workaround how you can get a spot elevation that gives you the height uh, relative to the zero zero level of this project and then the height that's relevant to uh, basically above sea level height so it's 50 meters above sea level and that's where this is at zero zero but if we were to go here to the site plan here we have where the uh, project elevation is uh, 3.4 meters the above sea level height is 53.4 meters so it's basically giving us both of those information and also going back to the floor plan, we cover the topic of, or we delve into the topic of graphics in Revit. It's a really complex topic, but I try to bring it closer to you and try to explain basically how Revit operates. So usually when I talk about graphics in Revit, I talk about uh, graphic visibility graphics overrides. Taking it a level uh, a bit further, I show you how to create a view template, but all of those are view specific. Now I show you how to set up the graphics on a more global scale by going here to object styles where when you make a change it doesn't only change the graphics for this particular view if you go maybe to a section view it will also make a change there so maybe if you change the thickness of these wall lines it will actually make that change on the whole complete project so there I show you how to make all of the changes I show you how to change all of the line weights how line weights change according to the scale which is really important 
and what's the difference between all of these model elements and how they correspond to scale and all of these annotation elements and how they correspond to scale or well they don't really correspond to scale they don't care about scale or they are the same any scale so I explain all of that and I explain all how Revit basically operates so you can have a better understanding of how it works and you can make maybe some more informative uh, changes and decisions when setting up your Revit projects. Okay, so that's the, the topic of this week's course. Check it out. First link in the description to my Patreon. You can find this course. I've got 20 courses more. They are all one hour long. And also there you can find this project file as well as all of my other Revit project files. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this announcement. And I'll be back with another regular Balkan Architect tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.